Я на самом деле не буду долго распространяться о лекции, я надеюсь, Жан Луи, я хочу отдать ему слово. Я просто хочу его представить для тех, кто не знает. Жан Луи не требует представления, но я хочу просто сказать пару слов о, о лекции и о его истории о близкого знакомства с Нером, с, с, с участниками группы Нер. Жан Луи профессор Нью-Йоркского университета, Института изящных искусств и также Принстонского университета. Он автор многочисленных трудов о, о, по истории модернизма, в том числе книги, с которой вы, думаю, все знакомы, Оли Крабезье, которая вышла в 2012 году а, и была прирочена к выставке Оли Крабезье в Пушкинском музее в 2012 году. А, вот, а сегодня Жан Нуи, вам всем удалось посмотреть а, 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 выставку, где подробно рассказано о городе будущего группы НЕР, а сегодня Жан Луи расскажет о, как раз об историческом контексте, Uh, и те идеи, uh, которые развивались, радикальная архитектура, которая зарождалась в 60-е и 70-е годы в Европе, в США и в Японии, которые повлияли очень сильно на, на идеи группы НЕР. И без дальнейших представлений, Жан-Луи, uh, спасибо вам огромное. Спасибо. Огромное спасибо, uh, Маша, это большая радость здесь быть сегодня и говорить о Нере. Я буду выступать по-английски, но первые слова по-русски, естественно. Я, мне надо поздравлять всех, которые сумели вот, чудо поставить эту выставку в руине музея, музея архитектуры, сам музей и директор uh, Лиза Лихачева, uh, высшая школа uh, урбанистики, без, uh, без которой ничего не, не было бы, потому что инициатива этого проекта вышла из, um, из школы, из, uh, во время ректора Новикова, если вспомню точно, Центр франко-российских исследований и его директор Винсан Бене, которые, которые пригласили меня в Москву, и, конечно, куратори выставки Маша Пантелеева и Саша Гутнова, которые сделали замечательную работу рядом. Вам надо тоже посмотреть фильм, очень-очень мощный и интересный фильм на э, верхнем этаже. Э, сегодня вечером мне хотелось поговорить о Нере вообще, как историк архитектуры и тоже как э, э, с точки зрения э, о личного опыта контактов э, с Нером. Я об этом по поговорю. Для меня э, Нер, я не, немного моложе, чем основатели Нера, но не, не очень много, не намного. И э, это они для меня были друзья, были знакомства, и не, они не, не являются только объектами исследования. И я буду об этом поговорить э, теперь. Но э, если, если разрешите по-английски. Вот. Um, uh, 60 years after uh, NER was uh, formed within the, uh, as you can see from the nearby exhibition, within the Moscow Architectural Institute, a broader, more precise account of its goals, its projects, and its resonance in both Russia and the world is overdue. NER is underrepresented in a way in many his histories of contemporary architecture, with one exception, the book I made for Faden several years ago. But in general, uh, Archigram, Superstudio, Archizum, uh, Claude Parent, Evirilio, Idrugier, uh, uh, Iprache uh, have uh, got a, a, a very broad spot. This is not the case with NER. It will change. Uh, I hope with the exhibition and the very elegant book published uh, today. Um, when NER is considered, and this is what I will do tonight, uh, in the context of a transnational history of architecture, 
uh, and not simply within the framework of development specific to the Soviet Union, uh, NER's unique collective project becomes more salient, and this is what I hope to be able to explain today. As a way of entering uh, into um, uh, uh, this uh, contribution tonight, I would like to mention some intersections between my personal trajectory and the members of NER, contacts which started uh, when, I, uh, when I began to come regularly to Moscow to study the very then rather boring official Soviet architecture and discovered both the historical avant-garde and the new, new avant-garde. Um, uh, I had an early uh, view of NER's work through the memorable book of Anatole Kopp, uh, French architect born in uh, Petrograd in uh, 1915, Kopp, who was the author of a pioneering book in 1967, Town and Revolution. He had then uh, concluded his historical uh, analysis of constructivism and the other groups of the avant-garde uh, by, uh, with an image of a project by Nair, which you see here, laid out on the same page as Osterman's Dom Novobuita. Kopp made little effort to hide his skepticism as to the plausibility of the project. He was not convinced. He wondered, quote, in the long run, say by the year 2000, we're now in 18, by the year 2000, is there a genuine prospect for the realization of proposals such as those of the young city planners, Baburov, Gutnov, Dumenton, Lejava, Sadovsky, and Kharitonova for a new element of settlement? Question mark. He was not convinced. The book published in Milan on the occasion of the 68, 1968 Trenale, where Nair uh, represented the Soviet Union, or almost represented the Soviet Union, as we'll see, had not escaped me uh, before I arrived uh, in Moscow in 73, I was keenly interested in Italy and regularly purchased the most original books published there, and in particular all the books dealing with Russian architecture. Uh, as I was leafing through the pages of this publication with very dark, very black images, maybe you can see some of its pages in the exhibition, I was eager to discover the alternatives to the official discourse of, on architecture and urbanism during the Brezhnevian Zastoy, which I was perceiving from a distance. Towards the beginning of, 1970, uh, of the 1970s, the contrast between the initiatives of NER and the dominant Soviet architectural production came to the attention of Western architects who had not yet had access for instance, to this Italian publication. Um, when the Parisian journal L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui, which was, as, you remember, as some of you remember here, was published in a, a much s more slender version in the Soviet Union without the ads, it was much lighter and badly printed, but very, very influential. When L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui published an issue devoted to Soviet architecture, uh, the first one since 1932, uh, three double spreads were devoted to the project of NER. This overview of an architecture which was altogether uh, monumental and modern, uh, the official Soviet architecture, was opened with an introduction by Konikov on the city of tomorrow with its own projects. But the illustrated account by NER, which was called Four Problems for Tomorrow's Architecture contain the main elements of a presentation given in Milan uh, at, the s at the cost, as you see here, of some graphic uh, manipulations. Uh, the most striking one consisted of a double spread, which you see here, meant to be read vertically, that presented a drawing of the linear structure which had been um, shown hor uh, horizontally in Milan and which has been uh, rebuilt here in a, in a brilliant way. As a result of this layout, 
the drawing of Nair took, um, took on a more decorative than demonstrative quality, becomes almost graphic only. Fragments were enlarged to form a mosaic of illustrations, difficult to link with the written account, which had been cut up it in itself uh, into declarative and rather schematic paragraphs by Gutnoff and Lejava. The inclusion of a spiral-shaped hard structure Nair featured in the 1970 uh, uh, exposition in Osaka, which you see here, which has been rebuilt as a model in the show, um, uh, indicated that the article went beyond the simple and condensed presentation of drawings included in the Italian foray of 68 and rounded out the account of these two main manifestations of a group outside of the USSR. There is another one, a late one, which I will mention at the end of this lecture, but this is another story. Even before, and let me get back to uh, some personal notes, um, before the outset of my study trips to Russia, I was very curious to meet the founders of the group, and I found, found this summer when Masha Panteleyev asked me to write this uh, contribution uh, in my archives, the uh, notebook, uh, uh, which you see on the left, uh, black note, Moi black note, which records notes from my first meeting with Gutnov and Lejava on January 8, 1974, at uh, the building occupied, the beautiful building occupied by uni uh, what was then called Sayuz Abshest Drozhby, as it was uh, easier for these young professionals to meet in a place specially meant for the meeting with foreigners than to meet them in other quarters, although things were not that bad, I must say. Uh, during the course of this encounter, which followed a previous conversation with Lejava at Marquis, the two architects expanded at length the entire history uh, uh, and the working methods of Nair, placing it within the currents of the then uh, Russian research, and I will return to this in a minute. In the following years, I would often see both Gutnov and Lejava, as well as other members of the group uh, where are they? Here. Like, um, uh, in, in particular, uh, uh, Udintsev. Uh, in particular, when in 1978, we ended up working with Gutnov on one of the very first exhibitions held at the Centre Pompidou, which you see on the left. It had opened its doors just one year before. The show was entitled Urban Space in the USSR and was intended to offer an overview of architecture in the cities and to provide some perspectives on development policies and housing strategies. Uh, and finally, the last moment in this, uh, in this conversation was uh, uh, corresponded with the um, publication by Gutnov on his own of his book uh, uh, on, uh, with, uh, well, publication to Buduše Goroda and the publication by Gutnov of his later book, Evaluza Gradostraitelstva. Um, all these encounters took place in Moscow, uh, with, the, uh, with one exception, and some of, uh, some of the presents tonight remember it, uh, in parallel to with the exhibition on the, on the, on the left, a um, uh, collective trip was organized with uh, young Russian architects who had very few opportunities to uh, go to the West, and a group of some 30 and 40 or 40 uh, colleagues came. I remember Andrei Bokov, I remember, I remember Alec uh, Alexander Skokan, for La Première, uh, who came to Paris with an undetermined number of uh, gebists of uh, uh, whom uh, I have forgotten, uh, and this uh, was a very interesting moment in the um, in uh, in our relationship. I remember, in particular, dragging Gutnov to the newly uh, completed headquarters of the Communist Party, and we found ourselves in the uh, same elevator as the horrible first secretary of the time, Georges Marchais, who looked uh, at us as if we were Martians. It was a very uh, amusing moment, uh, which I will not, I, I think, Alyosha, remember it uh, during a long time. But let's return to the context in which uh, Nair formulated uh, and developed its strategies between the late 1950s and the 80s. Uh, as soon, let's uh, go back to the, uh, the bigger history. 
as soon as the Iron Curtain was slightly drawn back after the death of Stalin, uh, Soviet architecture was projected into a more open space. In fact, Soviet architecture had never been totally uh, close to inputs from the West, and many of the, uh, I remember people t t talking about the journals, they were extracting Western journals from the uh, cabinets of the professors who were authorized to ha have them at, at Marchi. But uh, the, space, the space of Soviet architecture became again permeable to contributions from abroad. Also, internal developments took place within an international framework fairly well known to the Soviets, at least through publications and occasional foreign visitors. It is important at this point to look bro more broadly at the world scene. The, the 1950s uh, were the period of the, what I would call, it's an ugly term in, uh, uh, in English, massification of modern architecture. In the Soviet bloc, as elsewhere, modernism had only, it should be remembered that modernism or modern architecture uh, I will not discuss semantically what modernism means. It's a term which is now used in Russia to, um, uh, I think, in a, uh, in a little ex excessive way, but this would be another discussion. Modernism in Russia had been only temporarily eclipsed between the reorganization of the literary unions of 32 and Khrushchev's speech to the builders in 1954, so b basically 20 years. Uh, uh, similar urban forms, in fact, appeared very quickly in both the so-called free world in the West and the socialist bloc. Uh, at the same time, the modern languages of architecture achieved hegemony and appeared to be capable of addressing any problem with the same syntax. Uh, and uh, we should remember that the so-called international style, which is now considered as a central notion, uh, is a sort of, uh, of that time, is a sort of propaganda fiction put together by the Museum of Modern Art, which was very quickly, very quickly put in, into crisis. The orthodoxy of the forms that originated in the, what were initially subversive experimentations by Le Corbusier, Gropius, or Mies van der Rohe, uh, was uh, very quickly uh, uh, re reshaped by contributions such as uh, the voluptuous curves of Oskar Niemeyer, which were known to the Russians already in the 1950s. This is an article on the mayor 57. And uh, also the organic volumes of Alto were discovered, not to mention, finally, publications discussing the new uh, architecture of the US by uh, uh, Genia Asse's uh, uh, mom, uh, Alexandra Christiani. A inter very interesting book, which is illustrated by uh, a very bad project by Gropius, based on Le Corbusier's Palace of Soviets entry. So it's a very, for me, it's a very bizarre, uh, bizarre choice for the cover. Um, uh, in matter of city planning, the practice of functional zoning, and here we find a theme which was really discussed by Nair, which had been applied with dexterity until the 1930s in Germany and the US, and transformed into a dogma by the CM congresses, was beginning to be questioned. The notion of the neighborhood unit was the basis for designs for residential quarters whose structures repeated themselves even when their particular outward appearance did not require that. Neighborhood units, this is, the concept is very close to the concept of micro rayon and it, in fact it has inspired the concept of micro rayon and it appeared in the, in the mid 1950s in this country. In reaction to uh, modern architectures running out of steam, the founders of Team 10, in particular here, uh, De Carlo, Candilis, Van Eyck, and the Smithsons, um, uh, most of them born between 1910 and 1920, so already uh, middle age almost, sound to uh, to breathe new life into the 10th CM Congress uh, of 1956. They proposed a new approach in which architecture and urbanists were not dogmatically separated. Their project reflected a more detailed attention to vernacular construction and the everyday life of inhabitants. Uh, we've already some ideas about their participation to the process. Although they received scant attention initially 
in the design, uh, in the um, in the official publications, the continuous structures developed by the founders of Team 10, along with a complex geometry, found an echo in the socialist countries, especially through the little journal Carré Bleu, which was published in Finland. Uh, the projects, for instance, of the Paul Oscar Hansen, an affiliate of Team 10, which, is, which are mentioned in, by Masha Panteleyeva in the catalog, were quite familiar to the Soviet architects. Uh, a familiar pattern in the 1920s, American designs were coming into Russia through Germany, and in the, 90, in the, in the 50s and 60s, very often, uh, the contemporary architecture from the West was filtered through uh, Polish journals. Uh, not, of course, through the East German ones. Uh, uh, thus, a set of approaches uh, informed by, uh, yes, uh, and, and here, yeah, another point I want to make, which is, for me, very important in the understanding of uh, architectural history. Uh, architectural history is, in general, uh, divided by my, most of my colleagues, by periods, by styles, a term which I never use personally, uh, by schools, I want to insist on uh, another notion which is useful to comprehend the work of Nair. Uh, and this uh, notion is the notion of generation, Pakaliene, which plays a determining role in social and intellectual history. And it makes a lot of sense to use it here. After the generation of the founders of modern architecture and this generation of rebels of the, 19, of the early 1950s, with Nair, Nair was part of a new generation that came into force. Uh, they were not exactly dreamers, but they, were, um, they had what I would call a fantastic imagination and refused to unquestionably serve the public policies of the state here, of the market in the West, or of academic programs. And then, with this generation, the story started to accelerate. The socially responsible projects of Team 10 in this slide would soon be, seem horribly conventional for, to, uh, to architects born at the end of the 1930s or in the early 1940s. A set of approaches informed by the conquest of, conquest of space and early computer science appeared. Uh, all bearing uh, the stamp of what I would call the great technological optimism, which is present, for instance, in Rainer Banham's book, Megastructure, uh, uh, late in respect to what Nair had done, but which uh, carries many, many comparable ideas. Levels of political commitment, and this is very important also in the West, varied among the protagonists of the new experimental architecture. The Japanese metabolists were unquestionably political in the criticism of post-war Americanization of Japan, even if their flying or floating cities might appear to be escapist flights of fantasy. On the other hand, the founding members of a London-based group, Archigram, practiced a sort of neo-futurism, which was frankly apolitical, no understanding of politics, uh, Archigram is very important in, in our story, and you should uh, know that in the early days of Nair, uh, sometimes Western critics called them Archigramsky, uh, in order to uh, refer them to this precedent. Um, so this is the, probably if we try to understand how these different projects developed, Archigram is, is one category. Uh, um, uh, after the, me the metabolist, and the third one would be represented by the projects of Jonah Friedman, uh, which combine the creation of a new spatial city superimposed to existing agglomerations, and also the use of mathematic, mathematical methods. The merit of uh, Friedman, and here you see his spatial city uh, floating, um, floating over New York, uh, here is a, a very uh, delightful and very uh, uh, very low-tech model. Uh, Friedman tried to combine users' participation and uh, an early use of a computer. He designed methods for the generation of users uh, 
determined uh, housing. Uh, finally, another version, maybe another type of approach of that time, which was uh, uh, based on the idea of cons building a sort of gigantic heterotopia in the deserts of Arizona, is the work of Paolo Soleri, also well known by, uh, by the Russians uh, through his early work, featured in the book of uh, Alexandra Christiani. These developments were hardly a mystery to young Soviet architects who knew almost everything. Uh, the Congress of the International Union of Architects in Moscow in 1958 had exposed them to ideas previously ignored. They were familiar with Western periodicals, including those from Japan. Be starting in 1961, as I've said, L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui was published in a Russian pirate edition without paying uh, anything back to the journal. Uh, and books, for instance, like those of uh, Michel Ragon, not my favorite writer at all, but uh, I think they had an, an, an importance here, were rather quickly translated. Uh, so books like uh, Ragon's and others were all the, uh, and, and all these uh, journals were on the drafting tables. This exposure to Archigram, the Metabolist, Friedman, or Soleri, which is described by Ilya Georgic, Lejava, who, as you know, uh, has been unable for uh, irreversible reasons uh, beyond his desire to uh, see the show, and I think he would have uh, loved it very much. So uh, all these uh, sources were combined, uh, in the case of Nair, with the awareness of a kistics, as proposed by the Greek urbanist Konstantinos Doxiadis. Here, Doxiadis, who was, conce was conceiving gigantic scheme at the scale of continents, and sometimes was uh, making totally, uh, totally irrealistic uh, prognosis. I like to show this image. Uh, Detroit has planned in 2100 as a gigantic metropolis, a very prosperous one. Uh, Doxiadis, of course, could not imagine uh, the notion of rust belt and the uh, dramatic uh, decay of Detroit. So this is one of the failures of um, a method of planning which was not defining itself as utopian or anything uh, like that. It was meant to be realistic, yet it was uh, much, more, much more utopian than anything else. In every domain, a young generation eager in the 60s to forget hardship and shortages rose up against colonial wars and later against the American war in Vietnam eager to change social customs and codes on a global uh, scale. Youth was the protagonist in movements that arose in Western Europe and America between the mid-60s and 70s, whose high points were the student and sometimes worker surprising of uh, 1968 or the spring of Prague in Czechoslovakia. In the Soviet Union, the so-called Shizdesiatniki, and here I use as an image this uh, painting, which I really love very much because it gives a notion of the hopes which were uh, invested in uh, design thinking, constructory. Um, the color is a little dull on this slide. So um, aspirations for uh, road, an irrepressible wave of optimism and a shared common religion of the future as Alexander Skokan uh, reports in the, in the catalog of the exhibition. But beginning in the 70s, after the invasion and normalization of Czechoslovakia, with the Zastoy in this country, uh, these hopes were dashed, and the time of more discreet infiltration strategies came about. And this is also perhaps why uh, NER uh, never con did not continue to develop its bold projects in the 70s. In this change context, radical movements of the early 20th, 20th century from futurism uh, to expressionism were rediscovered. The notion of utopia was put once again on the agenda, uh, in particular by the French group founded by Hubert Tonka, which uh, illustrated the thesis of sociologist Henri Lefebvre on the so-called urban revolution. Uh, it is here rather important to, to, to mention Lefebvre 
who has been translated into Russian, as Lefebvre had read Anatole Kopp, and so in the uh, experiments of the Russian avant-garde, maybe one uh, strategy for what he was calling the urban revolution. In 1967, in, and I return to the book of Kopp, uh, which I've already mentioned, he was uh, uh, looking, f looking forward and looking backward. Looking forward, he wrote, what will be the outcome of this research that envisages, uh, envisages development on a planetary scale, NERS? And that, in its way, continues the dreams of the urbanists and de-urbanists uh, who, in their own time, had also sought to suppress the contradiction between town and country. So Kopp was very right in connecting the ideas of Ostermann, the big uh, Dom Comuna by Ostermann, and there to the projects of the Russian avant-garde. In his preface to the American edition of the book that had been already uh, published, sorry, uh, in Milan, De Carlo was even more explicit. And here, uh, let's listen to what De Carlo, one of the members of Team 10, uh, uh, as, I, as I've said, would write. Unlike Western architectural revivals, he wrote, which consistently turn towards the past and, the pseu and are pseudo-innovative, the Soviet heritage suggest the idea of a revolutionary tradition to serve as an example for future-oriented planning." End quote. In passing, I would note that the Soviets were not only the only ones to recognize this relationship uh, with the uh, historical avant-garde. Uh, Doxiadis was very well acquainted with Milutin's linear industrial city and Kandilis, one of the founders of Team 10, who was born in Baku and had lived in Rostov, Nadanu uh, until 1926. I remember that Candilis had in his drawer in Paris issues of Savremiennaya Architectura when he was uh, working on some of his later projects. Starting, and here I'm returning to uh, Gutnov, Lejav and others, uh, they were very explicit in regard to their debts to the research of the 1920s as they were to their critical positions in relationship to the Russian theories of the time. They located their problematic in the context of moving beyond the theory of the microrayon. Microrayon was the horrible concept they were fighting against, but without subscribing, subscribing to what they were calling the mechanistic utopia of Gradov here, or Osterman, or the functionalism of the optimal city of other Russians like Bocharov, whom I won't illustrate today. I was struck by their interest in the sociological research of Georgi Dumenton, who's here tonight, who had been present from the very beginnings of the group, and for the so-called concrete sociology of Janitsky, Kogan, and others, which considered the city as a legitimate object of study, uh, as opposed to the official or abstract sociology, which was simply the repetition of Marxist or pseudo-Marxist uh, cliché. Uh, they, considered, uh, they considered this concrete sociology as much more serious. Uh, and I must say that for me, Kogan was a very important point of preference in criticizing the Soviet uh, mode of urbanization. I translated his early text into, into French during those years. The accent placed on sociology in the city during the 70s uh, marked the second important phase in the work of Nair. It is inscribed within a movement towards the urban realm, which had begun in the West as well as some 10 years, uh, as well, some 10 years before. What I would call the urbanization in the discourse of Nair was a break with their initial position as articulated during the previous decade. The term rassilienie, uh, settlement of a population over territory harkened directly back to the debates of the 1920s, late 1920s, between, uh, between the various uh, orientations, in particular the de-urbanism of uh, Orkitovich on the left, uh, heading towards the complete dispersion of the built fabric, which was not what 
now wanted, as you can see from their infrastructural model, and the hyper-urbanism and monotonous urbanism of Sapsovich. After two initial uh, exhibitions in Moscow, the group, uh, the most developed expression of the major work of Nair was presented in Milan in 1968, where the narrative unfolded at every scale, from the city as a whole to the dwelling unit. De Carlo, the Triennale's director, had already met Gutnov and had tried to bring him to Urbino, you can see the letters next door, for one of the meetings of Team 10. His, inv his invitation to Milan also extended to the publication of his book I Ideas for the Communist City in, his, in a series he directed. Uh, it opened, the book opened with a strange warning, perhaps written by the book's editor, uh, the architect Alexander Pavlich uh, Kudryavtsev, on behalf of a very official publishing house which had published the book in 66, uh, Kudryavtsev made a remark and criticized the authors, maybe he had to do that, for having neglected the question of villages and rural agglomerations dis despite their claims to deal with the territory as a whole. The title of the Italian version of the book, and I, I will mention the Russian one in a minute, uh, waved uh, like a flag in the breeze, uh, Città Comunista, the communist city, uh, had a political meaning which was obvious in the Italian context. And it's uh, particularly interesting to know that De Carlo was, not, was vehemently not anti-communist, but uh, challenging the communist as he was basically an anarchist and a critique from the left of the general line of the Italian party. So he was delighted at the opportunity presented by a new argument arriving from the East to circumvent what he considered to be the conservative positions of the heirs of Palmiro Togliatti, the uh, long-time head of the Communist Party. So you should understand that, that calling this book uh, Ideas for the Communist City was a way of saying to the Italian communists who were probably the most realistic of all the Western ones and still rather powerful, that they were uh, out, out of sync with reality, that they were out of sync with, uh, with the new ideas. Uh, later published, um, uh, yes, and uh, what followed was of course the exhibition of 1968 at the Triennale, which is partially reconstructed next door. This is probably the shortest exhibition in the history of architectural culture. Uh, in front of a protest of students and young workers, and you see here a completely outraged De Carlo trying to speak back at these people. The, show, the exhibition was closed three hours, three hours after its opening. So it's very important to realize that no one, no one ever saw actually the exhibition of Nair in Milan. It was never seen by anyone except a, a very, very, uh, very happy few. Um, then their book was published in English by the radical New York publisher uh, George Braziller, um, with some um, leaving aside some aspects, and this book was totally uh, ununderstandable. There was no way you could understand the position of Nair as it had been translated from the Italian. So you're familiar with a game of a telephone when you use two, uh, 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 two boxes of, uh, uh, two tin boxes and a, and a thread to uh, pretend you are talking to someone at a distance and uh, everything is deformed. It is a, a, a little bit like that. The message was completely blurred and this explains why my dear colleague uh, who is very well known in this country, Kenneth Frampton, wrote a completely outraged uh, article against Nair saying that they were betraying the social agenda of the Soviet avant-garde. He could not grasp anything from that book which uh, can, sti can still be found and you can check for yourself. Um, the approach um, uh, 
So uh, what were and here I want to I want to return uh, to the real book and not its translations and meta translations which uh, in in the end become caricature. What were the most important, in my view, the most important positions expressed in the book of 68? Uh, the first was a critical analysis of Soviet urban practice, in particular uh, the uh, microrayon. Here I'm showing you a very well-known one, the first experimental one in uh, Cheryomushki. Um, the book opened also, uh, the book very polemically was uh, opened uh, with an airview of Amsterdam linking views towards the future with an understanding of urban history. Um, the ideal forms of uh, cities which were proposed, uh, which were formulated under the slogan which you see on the cover of the book, uh, towards the new city, these ideas were not completely uh, autonomous in respect to the history of cities which was still present, the approach to the communist city being, uh, above all, a social one. Ritually, in the book, the authors invoke Marx and Engels in their accounts of the processes of formation of a modern capitalist city, but they also rely on the work of critical sociologists like Corgan to propose this condensed, very interesting and critical history of cities, which uh, could be read at a closer distance, going from primitive communities to monopoly capitalism whose spontaneous, malignant growth they condemned. Inse instead of cities, and here the terminology, the semantics, are important, uh, they use the term unit of settlement. And despite the ritualistic references to the classics of Marxism, uh, difficult to avoid in Soviet times, their theories were hardly centered on the primacy of production and deployed instead newer concepts such, such as notions about the environment and especially on communication, obchenia, which is a theme uh, Masha Panteleyeva has developed in particular in her remarkable dissertation, which is one of the sources of her contribution to this, uh, to this exhibition. Rather, rather than deplore uh, the incomplete character of available statistics, they sketched out a general scheme for the system of relation in communism in which all social interactions between individuals having access to mass education find themselves translated into specific spatial forms, themselves resulting in different forms of settlement. So in a way, there is a pioneering idea of the society of information, which was absolutely not a concept in the Soviet Union, where polemics were still, critics were still way, for instance, at uh, 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 cybernetics and other capitalist uh, conspiracies. From the outset of this analytical phase, the systematic dimension of the thinking in the 66 book is very, is, is clearly uh, visible. It is proposed that new industrial zones be created and s surrounded by agricultural ar areas, which is a totally contemporary concern. Even though the research centers were meant to be autonomous, uh, the accent was placed on interconnected activities, what city planners now, co now call clusters. The visual proposals showed the sources of electrical power nearby, including, as a default, the Bratsk Dam, which had been completed in 61, a view of the Dnieprogress built 30 years before, and uh, scientific facilities, scientific technological facilities like Aero Sarinen's brilliant General Motors Research Center near Detroit were also included without, without caption. There is no caption, so we can't understand if this is a model, if this is uh, somewhere in Japan, somewhere in uh, Siberia or in, uh, in the US. The general proposal of a structure remained close to the functional city of the Siam and, and seems almost to be a paraphrase of the functional city. Three, three areas being specified, production, daily life centered on dwelling and including schools and leisure time. The major difference in the proposal of Nair, and this is what you see also in the nearby gallery, is ultimately that the fourth function, which had been reduced only to circulation 
in the charter from Athens now becomes the very structure of the Rassilienie proposed. It is evident that this is then the central kernel of the group's discourse formulated on a very clear postulate, and here a quote from the 66 book, the chaotic growth of cities will be replaced by a dynamic system of urban settlement. This system will evolve out of an integrated and self-sufficient nucleus, the new unit of settlement, NER. Defined in these terms, NER can be compared to nearly all previous proposals for urban decentralization, especially those developed in the, so the early Soviet Union, where many, many uh, proposals had been made uh, in the early years. I'm thinking, for instance, of the early plan of Sakhalin for the expansion of Moscow through a series of satellite cities, which uh, this discussion is uh, on the early Soviet cities extremely inter interesting. Also, the idea of autonomous nodes had been formulated later by the German Bruno Taut in his book on the dissolution of cities, which won one of the uh, uh, books read by the de urbanists, etc. But far from being confined to the d domain of urban theories or the labyrinth, the labyrinth of post-Stalin political or philosophical doctrine, the th thinking of Nair, insofar as one can consider it as a single corpus, for me it's a rather rhizomatic uh, corpus, was marked by an obvious syncretism it drew nourishment from many fields of inquiry. And this is also where uh, I think NER should take, um, should take uh, its place um, in parallel to the work done by people like Le Corbusier. I'm not talking of Le Corbusier's forms, but Le Corbusier's ability to read the contemporary city and to read technology. Uh, I'm thinking also of Rem Kohlhaas's ability to observe new urban phenomena. NER was capable of weaving together different lines of uh, knowledge. Um, uh, in this way, the group sought to escape narrow and formalist definitions of architecture that ignored social issues and focused only on language and creativity, as well, of course, as rigidly normative urbanists by proposing new intersection between the discourse of science and uh, what, I what, I, what I call fantastic imagination. The main semantic fields in which these propositions were inscribed were biology and system theory, uh, the effects of which were exerted in Nair's discourse uh, in their enormous production of drawings and models, which you see next door, and their selection of reference images enlisted, like what we've seen, enlisted in support to their, um, uh, to their theories. The poor quality of successive reproduction of illustrations, which you see here. Some, sometimes uh, they were taken from Western publications. In the end, give them an al almost dream-like quality. They appear to be a sort of uh, phantasmatic images, uh, more subjective than descriptive. The field of biology was also uh, approached by other Soviet architects during that uh, period. I'm thinking of the rather silly book by Lebedev on uh, uh, architecture and uh, bionics, which is a theme uh, widely discussed today in the field of architectural formalism. Uh, this is one example. But um, uh, the field of biology, as understood by Nair, uh, provided concepts, for instance, such as nucleus. Nucleus is fundamental in the discourse of Nair. And more generally, a cellular, vascular and neurological approach to urbanism. Analogies between living organisms and territorial complexes in form drawings and models that include fibers, uh, muscles, and proliferating extensions. The field of systems, on the other hand, harkens to the intense effort of the Soviet Union in the area of cybernetics, uh, whose principles, in a way, touched and dis di dif were diffused in almost every single discipline. In the book of 66, Nair addresses the relationship between an man and machine and continued from then on to identify systems at different scales at which to act. Uh, the discourse was not particularly productivist, but nonetheless, there was in the writings a very optimistic outlook 
on the development, for instance, of automated industry enabled by the so-called uh, scientific and technological revolution based on research and in which machines were capable of feedback. So I think it would be interesting, and maybe this will be done tomorrow, to look at uh, the visions, what I would call the visions, uh, the inspiration of NER, and to look now at the, uh, the new methods of automated produ uh, production and maybe even artificial intelligence. Um, uh, NER included references to the text of uh, Stanislav Strumilin, a veteran Soviet planner who had already taken a defining part in the discussions around urbanism and de urbanism during the first five years plan. So there was an awareness of the economical discourse. Some projects can be understood, and this is, you see these projects nearby, this is the, the Milan Triennale, uh, with this long, very long wall, uh, very convincingly reproduced uh, on paper. And in the Milan presentation, you had a sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it a conflict, but a contrast between what were, mm, what could be understood as organisms, living organisms, this one called babochka, butterfly, uh, with blood vessels, networks of nerves, and tentacles, in some cases with what seem to be bone structures. This circular form resembled uh, strongly a mysterious creature in the process of being dissected, if one looks at the overall plan at a great scale. But when one starts looking at uh, uh, other proposals of NER, uh, one discovers also mechanical systems which are, seem to be more derived from those of industrial complexes. NER's body of work included proposals that addressed all levels of uh, architectural design. The, re the research initially is fundamentally typological in particular with their diploma project. Uh, for these are new types of uh, buildings, separate objects of study to be aggregated to get together in a global scheme. In fact, the book of 66 proposed to completely rethink the dwelling unit by replacing the plan divided into rooms for single functions within a single space, a sort of loft. So there is an underlying uh, interest for new forms of dwelling. I wouldn't say Nair is not returning to the famous uh, uh, cell type F of Ginsburg, but uh, is imagining new form of dwellings in, in which the division into small rooms, which was the base of all Soviet uh, uh, housing construction, would be replaced by something different. Construction technologies were also taken into consideration, uh, starting with forms of heavy prefabrication uh, hegemonic in the USSR at that time. The group didn't stop there, and I like very much this view of what a uh, concrete uh, city could have been. Uh, on the top, we see uh, urban environments shelter sheltered by bubbles, like the one conceived by B Buckminster Fuller for Manhattan, which, which he had realized in a more opaque version for the 1959 Sokolniki uh, exhibition in Moscow, by the way. A bold proposition, the bubbles were intended to be made out of plastic. There was also uh, a, a f the focus on the large ship, the large ocean liner, already a popular model among modern architects such as Le Corbusier, uh, which was uh, considered as a possible prototype. The book published in the West during the 60s, which gave Nair's instant fame, gives only, and this is what the exhibition shows, I think, a poor image of the extraordinary graphic universe they produced. And subsequent publications would scarcely do justice to the complexity and scale of their models. And I would say here that despite its extraordinary aesthetic qualities, the book published in parallel to this exhibition doesn't yet, doesn't yet, give a full view of the production which is in the exhibition. So there is a, still a lot of work to do uh, to, uh, uh, to discuss these uh, forms. Um, the varieties of modes of representation were extensive from explanatory diagrams of principle to minutely detailed perspectives from wide urban views to architectural close-ups. And interestingly, 
The hand of each of the authors remain recognizable. There are drawings uh, which are Lejavesque, others which are Skokanesque, uh, uh, etc. Uh, in, uh, in the corpus which has been put together, despite the patient pursuit of graphic coordination. And this tends to make the work, uh, their work, uh, to transform their work in a kind of comic strip. Uh, in, um, in the catalogue of the exhibition, Alexander Skokan discusses the language of Nair, Masha Panteleya, Panteleyeva discusses its urban lexicon. These analogies only make sense if one sees the project as a true linguistic apparatus, not, not just as a series of more or less borrowings from theories of language. The lexical dimension occurs at the level of buildings, the component of urban ensembles. So there is, there is a lexical dimension and there is at the same time a syntactic uh, dimension. And, and uh, uh, for instance, in terms of syntax, uh, Lejava points out uh, also in the catalog uh, the difference between the ruslo or channel in English and uh, uh, the linear form of Nair and the autocentric forms uh, in the former as well as the latter. Specific rules apply to the assemblage of forms. The, uh, it is important to see that this approach as shown in Milan and I repeat this image was uh, rather broadly published uh, by a journal, uh, this French journal, which at that time had the pro probably largest international circulation of all the journals, and that uh, the later presence of Nair in Osaka had a very uh, important meaning in an exhibition which has been considered by Rainer Banham as the triumph of the megastructure where the main pavilion designed by Kenzo Tange was a huge megastructure where designers like Arata Isosaki were extremely active. And here uh, is, of course, a story to be told. There are some young scholars who are beginning to look at it, which I think is completely ignored in this country, which is uh, the uh, uh, interest uh, late uh, Soviet Union architects had for Japan, and which they shared with uh, other intellectuals like uh, Tarkovsky, for instance, in Salyaris, uh, which uh, is partly shot in Tokyo. So there is a great uh, interest, no longer for America only, not, not, no longer for, for Brazil or Finland, but also for Japan, which, and the, the experience of Osaka might be one, uh, one particular uh, episode within this framework. Um, uh, the exhibition in Osaka promoted the notion of environment, of environment, which was at that time beginning to be discussed in uh, the Soviet Union, in particular within the framework of uh, of Avnite. Another process which takes place uh, in the work of Nair after '68, and here is a little reminder of the infinite sadness of Prague in August '68. Uh, uh, when the Prague spri Spring was suppressed by the Soviet army. Uh, an infinite sadness. At the same time, uh, Nair's discourse uh, engaged uh, what I would call a second process. And this process I have called the urbanization of the discourse of Nair. The city, the existing city, very importantly, is no longer seen as an old and rigid system that could be discarded or totally reinvented. In the same way, it no longer resembles the exceedingly heavy structures of the past that needed to be forgotten, but becomes the city becomes the only possible horizon. This turn uh, coincides with the pessimism of the former Shizdisyatniki as their aspiration for a rapid transition to a sort of idealized communism uh, were, were disappointed. Uh, if the Russians at that time don't seem to have read Western works like uh, Aldo Rossi's very important book, L'Architettura della Città of 1968. Rossi, who was a great fan, sorry, Rossi was a great fan of Stalinist architecture, and he was fighting with other editors of the journal Casabella in Milan who wanted to uh, 
uh, celebrate the avant-garde. Rossi was conservative, as you know, in terms of aesthetics. So the Russians probably did, had not read his book uh, in which the notion of urban fabric was elaborated well before Gutnov used it, as Lejava reminds us in the book. Uh, but a number of authors took up the urban questions in their uh, critiques of the new schemes uh, produced in the Soviet Union. Uh, an architect by training, but a sociologist in practice, Kogan, whom I've, I've already mentioned, pleaded for urbanity with an empathy for urban culture that aligned itself to a great extent with Georg Simmel, the founder of modern sociology, uh, with additional, of course, an obligatory reference to Mar the, what I would call the Mar Marxist catechism. For his part, Ikonikov published in 72 a book on the architecture of a city, uh, which, in which he insisted for the first time, and that's the merit of his book, I'm not a great fan of uh, the production of Ikonikov at large, uh, maybe uh, considered historically I will be proven wrong, but here he insists on the role of the old and the new in the composition of a city, justifying a halt to large-scale destruction and an announcing a return to the urban center. Uh, so I was very, for my part, I was very happy to read uh, the book uh, published in 77 by Gutnov and Lejava, Budushe Goroda, uh, in a series entitled uh, the creative platform of the architect in order perhaps to justify its heterodox nature. It was probably the most fully formulation of a group thinking in its development. The two authors laid out the outline of the history of cities, uh, adjusted to their ideas, and laid out their personal vision of the utopian movements that had appeared after 60. So it's a, it's a ref reflexive book in which the contribution of the other so-called radical architects is considered. Um, uh, and interestingly, this book, which is illustrated by uh, drawings, as, uh, which replaced the, uh, the horrible quality photographs then available in Soviet publications, this book was a very convincing, but perhaps precisely because of these little drawings. Um, it, it was as if all the projects within the book, all the plans and drawings, even including those of the American illustrator Saul Sandberg, had now become the work of a group. One had the impression, one has the impression when reading this book that uh, uh, Gutnov and Lejava and people who work with them uh, had drawn the entire world with their own means. Uh, the perspective laid out in the manifesto is twofold. The conclusion, already colored by some of the ecological considerations that were becoming the norm outside of the USSR and slightly in this country, uh, this perspective addressed, addressed Nair's creation like those that were presented in Milan um, in the same way as the, uh, as the secret reconstruction of the center of Moscow inside uh, city blocks. In this phase, as Gutnov and Lejava told me in 1974, uh, at the time of our discussion, the force of Nair were significantly increased by the participation of younger members coming from Marquis, who were uh, redeployed around these issues into parallel lines of research, as if the group ceased to behave, uh, to behave like a brigade, initially it was like brigada, of students and teachers, and was becoming a sort of research institute without walls, which informally coordinated the work of several institutions. I've, I've called this phase, in this phase the group becomes a sort of galaxy, in which you have stars, you have planets, you have asteroids, you have, pla you have comets, you have people who are playing all sorts of different roles and working separately on different themes. So I remember uh, the, the outline given by Gutnov of um, his work at uh, the Institute uh, Genplan Masqui, Rusakov working on the underground city, uh, Sadovsky uh, working on the units of dwelling, uh, Skokan on the ability of the availability of residual spaces 
in the city, especially the courtyards and the passageways, the stu famous study of the Staliashnikov period work. Uh, here, Yudinsev addressing temporary structures, Baburov, the reconstruction of the existing fabric, Dumenton explored the role of science and industry in the urban system, and Bokov working on multifunctional complexes. So for me, it's a very interesting phase, which goes beyond the exhibition here of what I would call the near diaspora, the, the expansion, the expansion of near into a galaxy of creative and autonomous people. This way of working in which the members NER infiltrated themselves uh, like, uh, like microbes into the existing apparatus of architecture and urbanism in Moscow constituted the final phase of their common adventure into what I've, what I've called diaspora that led to a certain assimilation also of their discourse into the late architectural culture of the Soviet Union. And I, I just want to return at the end to this exhibition of 78, because uh, in a way it can be considered as a, uh, as a production of NER in many ways. Uh, you see here the poster, which is a, a collage of uh, Polish graphic designer Czislewicz using uh, as a base a photo of uh, a cover of Novilev by uh, Rochenko. Uh, I've found in my archives this completely forgotten drawing of Gutnov. Uh, for the gallery at the Pompidou, the idea of creating a sort of mini urban, urban environment in which uh, the visitors would have been, uh, uh, would have been uh, contained. Uh, here is a collage I made using a photo of a model made in Moscow in the typical uh, cardboard, uh, with a typical cardboard technology available at the time and I've just inserted titles to explain the story of the exhibition. And here, I found photo of this last model of the gallery at the Pompidou, where you see the uh, uh, load-bearing structure of a center here, and the idea of an exhibition which would have been suspended. Of course, this, wa this was over-optimistic. Even at the Pompidou, miracles never happen, and so everything, in the end, had to be brought down to the earth. This is another view we see in particular uh, the great honesty of this exhibition where a banal Soviet apartment was shown as a sort of document on the everyday of Soviet society together with a fantastic carbon model of the Staliashnikov pro project which I've already mentioned. Uh, two books came out of the exhibition and I want to mention this also as a sort of expansion in which I was involved. Um, uh, a big book a uh, big history book which I edited with uh, Manfredo Tafuri and Marco de Michelis in which Gutnov uh, returned to the history of NER in the context of a broader uh, uh, consideration of Soviet planning and a small brochure uh, also in with a graphic design of Cislevich in which the new discourse of NER on the existing city uh, was uh, reported by, uh, by Gutnov. Um, as, um, of course, as a young architect at that time involved in, the, uh, in some difficult battles for the renewal of Paris against a very destructive functionist projects, I, I, could, I, I could not but subscribe to the agenda uh, and to the method of Gutnov. So let me conclude returning to this wonderful photo of uh, the founding members. Um, uh, in the catalog of the exhibition, both Lejava and Askolkan remind us that NER was also, and perhaps primarily, a collection of enthusiasts bound together in their expectations for the future, but also in a kind of great game, and this is what I've tried to say, a great game within institutions in which, like castaways, in interstellar space, they had no other recourse but to use the mass of institutes, of associations like the architects' unions or the state workshops to further their trajectories. It is also within these institutions that they continued for some time to find the workforce required for the production of drawings and models, younger people who uh, learned a lot with them. This drift towards a theater, which is another aspect 
uh, considered by uh, Masha in her, in her text, but drift toward the theater was part of a process which consisted of redeploying the imagination to issues that could actually be mastered, the Stolyeshnikov, Stolyeshnikov project or theater. It was not possible to colonize Siberia, but the creation of theatrical installation could enable, uh, could uh, make possible the creation of projects that were physically palpable, more as a soothing heterotopia, to use the term of Michel Foucault, a soothi soothing enclosed space than a utopia which could be designed but not possibly built. And despite, despite this retreat, uh, I will end up on, on another uh, uh, consideration taken from astrophysics. Uh, despite this retreat, just as uh, supernovas in space transmit their light centuries or millennia after their implosion, the clarity and the, ide of, uh, the ideas and forms of Nair is continuing to illuminate us uh, even when time has passed. Благодарю за внимание.